what we try to, to define in this book is the relationship that exists between states and firms and to complement this link with the intervention of what we call pirate organizations. And we go back to the ages of the 17th and 18th century when pirates were on the seas and were contesting the rights of states and sovereign monarchies at that time to appropriate the routes that the boats and ships were taking between Europe and Latin America, Central, Central America, and North, North America. So therefore, the link between the pirates and capitalism is a contestation of certain appropriation rights that states and firms codify in, the, in their uh, attempts to, well, um, accumulate capital, invest, and earn benefits from their actions. So what is at stake is, um, are actually two things. First one is cyber pirates try to defend the right for everyone to copy some contents and diffuse it to their friends or even to some people they don't know. So in, in, in this, this first aspect of the, of, of the subject, of the topic, it's um, very similar to what the you know, pirates are the sea were defending, which is freedom of exchange, free freedom of movement. But there is also a second part of it, which we don't talk about in the, in the book, uh, actually, which is more the way some of these uh, hackers and cyber pirates can be used by governments and states to attack other government, governments and states. So, for instance, uh, in China, uh, you have lots of uh, hackers who do this maybe as a hobby, but who can also turn themselves into uh, agents of the state to attack certain uh, targets. Well, actually, it can prevent uh, some factories' operations from, from operating. Uh, in, the in the case of uh, some viruses or in the case of intrusion into uh, data sets uh, of governmental agencies or firms uh, or state, uh, state departments, yes, it can, it can destroy information, I would say, or it can impair the possibility that some machines or some uh, facilities will operate normally. This is what happened in Iran, for instance, with some viruses that were spread uh, into, uh, into plants. Yes, yeah, so that's true that for a very, very uh, long time, the pirates, as we're saying, they found a public cause. So this can take various forms. Some are destroying economic value for the ones who actually would not respect the freedom and liberty of people to uh, act, to exchange goods or information, or to move around. Uh, but some others are, let's say, more political. And so you, you can see the emergence of pirate uh, parties in, in Europe in Sweden, or in Germany, and even in France. Um, so I think that uh, the offer, the political offer that they, they defend, uh, they propose, uh, is of value for, this for the countries in which they, in which they, they operate in terms of uh, proposing new ways of considering economic exchanges value as far as how to enter parliaments and be active forces that will modify the way uh, uh, the politics will be done, I'm not a, a politicist myself, so I'm, I'm not an expert on that, and I would doubt uh, that this would be the case. You see that pirate organizations are multiple in their ends and their forms. They can be activists grouped together to defend some technological new standards. They can be uh, impairing uh, uh, traditional firms' actions, and they can be also uh, political parties that, by different means, uh, uh, permeate the traditional uh, uh, politics in the different countries.